Hello everybody, welcome to a new tutorial from Sound for More. It's Leo speaking. Today we are going to demonstrate Alti Space 2, which is a fantastic new convolution reverb created by Igor Vasiliev. Yes, Igor Vasiliev, which always gives us a fantastic new creative application. And this one is not far from being a creative application, and I will explain why. So before I start, I would like to remind my viewers to subscribe as that helps with growing the channel, bringing more videos, giveaways, tutorials, etc. So I'm inside the AUM. So let me disable, first of all, Alti Space 2. And I have loaded the ER and Log Synth. I selected just a saw mix. The saw mix sounds like so. As you can hear, there is no effect applied to that uh, so mix. There is no reverb, chorus, etc., etc., which is what we really want. So, <clears throat> if you don't know how um, convolution reverb works, well, it's very different from a normal digital algorithm reverb because it uses a digitized sample, which is called an impulse response. So, effectively, you record way that a room, a space, respond to a noise which has been caused in that space and you digitize that, you bring it in as a sample which is called your impulse response and then you use that to manipulate any input which is going through uh, your app which is producing the reverb that you're looking for and the works, it works simplistically, so it takes practically each sample and applies those samples stretching in, in a very High level, le high level explanation over those impulse responses and then recombines all of those altered samples through a convolution process to give you the final effect. So let's enable that. And um, I have set it now to work through this preset called the Cafridal R7. Let's exit. And this is what uh, the main interface looks like of uh, Altispace 2. I really, really hope you have headphones on because it's what you really need in order actually to hear how realistic the effect can be. But let's try to play a little bit more. Really, really fantastic. So, a um, minimalistic interface, but actually quite effect and due to the nature as well of how the reverb works, which is not a digital algorithm, so you don't have many options um, that you can change, which are primarily in terms of input, output, uh, filtering, and then some of the changes, of course, to the impulse response, which you have under here, and um, some further... Uh, um, parameter to alter, for example, stereo, the has effect, etc, etc. And you have, interestingly, also a gate effect, which I'll show you in a moment. Anyway, starting from the top here, if you click where it in, you have the name here, Churches, Cafridal R7, you click on it here, you have a selection of fantastic presets, which is really, really nice. You can go by favorite users, one which I already imported one, what's on the device, you can create different groups, you can see them all. Then the, the great thing is that you can import your uh, impulse response. So practically every preset corresponds to a new impulse response, as I explained at the beginning. And you see the length in second here. So for example, this Cathedral R7 has 4.1 seconds of impulse response uh, digitized. And the longer it is, the better in terms of a reverb, of course, if you're looking for that effect can create a new one, you can import a new one, which I'll show you in a moment, delete one, create a new one, save it, and of course, set it, and clicking on set, and then of course, so you close, clicking on the X. You can go to the previous one, you can go to the next one, you can save the reset, the, the preset, you can reset it to default, you can go to application settings over here, and then you can also the help, which is very, very detailed, as always, from here. Um, so, how does it work? Well, you have an input here, and you can set the input level, right? Keep 
keep the input level towards the maximum but not reaching the maximum that would be good practice okay so also here is where you can treat the input uh, signal as stereo mono uh, left or right for further processing of course the output will always be stereo okay here as well you can add some noise to uh, your input signal so hopefully you start to hear that noise that it also depends on the dry and wet effect that you have as an output and also by the filtering here that you have in place So hopefully you can hear that that effect is uh, changing. Double click on control to go back to the default. Okay. The amount of noise is dependent on the input level that you have coming through um, the reverb. On the right hand side, you have your output level, which of course you can increase. You can set drive and wet in terms of ratio. enable or disable the effect over here okay and as, as you can hear it's quite realistic which is the beauty of a compilation reverb let's go for something which has a quite long 6.29 second uh, uh, impulse response and um, let's set it and let's try is that you can import impulse response and therefore you can create all sorts of different sounds and that is where the application become becomes very creative as a, a an app um, now many reverbs will have a gate as um, a feature so the moment it is disabled so you can have it as a gate so it means that when it goes over the threshold it will allow signal to go through and you can establish also the attack of what is going through to the reverb and also the release in terms of timings in second and you can also assign a minimum level as well of signal which will go through if you don't uh, reach that threshold if you click again on gate you can go in dark mode which is exactly the opposite of gate now let me show you the gate mode and let's set these to something like that the threshold minus 13.4 something like that you will see the um gate go over, over the threshold when you see here the act button uh, being illuminated and you will hear it will let through um sound to the reverb engine that the um that gated uh, effect um and you can see also the button your act which was blinking was uh, which uh, uh when the signal was going through the over the threshold it was allowing signal to go into the reverb let's try again So you can hear it better now, that gated effect. As I mentioned, you can set to have a minimum level that goes through. Okay, and of course you can set also that minimum level to maximum. But if you do that, what's the point of having a gate um, as, a, as a feature? Of 
quite nice and you can also increase the attack of course you can go up to one second and for the release you can go up to three seconds And that will, of course, change it will change the way that the signal will go through and how it will go through with a higher or lower attack and higher or lower release, depending on those settings. You can also apply a filter here and you can have it pre-reverb or post-reverb. I like to have it post-reverb, but you can have the opposite. You can have a set a low cut filter here, also a high pass filter. And then the beauty here is that you can assign the EQ frequency and for that frequency, what is the gain in decibel, in decibel, which of course you can have a gain or the opposite as well, or a tunation. So. I was changing the EQ frequency, having uh, increased quite a bit the EQ gain, so you can hear a difference, right? So let's increase again the wet uh, settings. Let's remove the threshold because we have the gate off and the duck off as well. And let's play a little bit also with uh, the low cut and high frequency cut. <laughs> frequency you notice that particularly when you have noise on so you notice that that I was cutting high frequency now the next part is about changing how changes settings related to the impulse response so you have the length that you want to use from the impulse response which you can decrease of course here if you decrease it of course the reverb effect will be shorter see it is cut right you can also set it to have a pre-delay millisecond. In this case, 95.3 millisecond. Okay, so if you want to have that pre-delay in terms before the reverb kicks in. There is also an experimental feature here where you can change the pitch. If you go higher in pitch, it will make your sound brighter, but will give you the impression also that it will get uh, shorter as a reverb. that better when I change the impulse response. If you do the opposite, of course, it will make the effect longer because you're lowering the pitch. As well, what you can do here, you can amplify early reflection or late reflection. So be careful as you, if you do a low pitch, and a lot of early reflection, it can get quite muddy uh, as a reverb. And as you heard, the output was quite high, so in, in some cases you might want to reduce that and acting here on the output level. As you heard as well, uh, if you notice, when I double click on the early and late uh, um, dial here, the changes were not instantaneous because the changes are applied to that impulse response sample and they are roughly a delay of something like a second uh, because it is not a digital reverb using algorithm. So you have a little bit of delay before the changes actually take place. but. It's not too bad, and it also depends on what processor you have uh, available on your device. You can set also the direction to be reverse as well, which is quite interesting. Quite 
quite different. Moving on, under effects, you can reduce the level of stereo. So if you go down to zero, it's practically a mono signal. You can apply enhance effect, so you can create that delay in one channel or the other. So you can see left and right as per has effect. And then you can apply a modulation as well, and you can set the rate and the depth. So let me show you. Let's go high to maximum to depth, and then let's slowly increase the, the modulation rate so you can hear the effect. <laughs> which is used here uh, for the modulation. You can have sign on triangle, so just two for the moment, really nice. As I mentioned, you can establish what is the output level and the dry wet effect and having the effect on and off here. Now, as I mentioned earlier, this effect is actually quite good and it can become creative, particularly because you can import your impulse response. So let's try. So let's click here on the preset. And by the way, you have so many presets. Just uh, enjoy the ride, as they say. Let's go to user. And I imported one, which is a boy choir. Let's set it. Now, you have to be careful when you use your, uh, in, when you imported your uh, impulse response, but this will give you straight away a sense of what happens. This is uh, a boy choir used as an impulse response, which is not really a reverb, but it just shows you what you can create, of course, uh, um, using different impulse response. So let's try. Quite different, isn't it? And I also decreased a bit the output level because I knew it was going to go up very quickly. And let me try the pitch here. So you can hear the difference. Let me try to lower the pitch. And again, you also heard a little bit of delay in terms of how the pitch was changed over that impulse response. So as you can see, it's a fantastic and um, convolution reverb and also can be used as a creative app, which is normally the case with uh, application from Igor Vasiliev. Um, I will upload other videos where uh, I can show you how great uh, you can, how great the app is, and how fantastic you can change the sound of a lot of instruments that you already have inside your iOS ecosystem. I hope you enjoyed, and see you at the next tutorial. Thank you. Bye.